Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well. In this video, we're going to look at the Quran and see what the Quran tells us about the number of days that we should fast. The reason why I'm making this video is that uh, some brother made a comment on one of my videos and said that we have to fast two days. And then uh, someone else said it's three days, someone else said it's seven days, and someone else said it's nine days. So someone else said it's 10 days. So I have heard these things uh, over the years. So I just want us to, uh, first of all, not just follow our, our, our whims and wishes and desires. And if you want to do that, sure, go ahead and do that. But uh, that's not what my channel is about. This channel is about Allah, is about his commandments, is about his book. And it's about what he has written for us in his book. So without further ado, let's take a look. Verse, first verse we're going to look at is verse number 184 of chapter 2. Talks about fasting. It said it was written for you. Written for you. Um, just like uh, before. And then it says, tells us something very interesting. It says, Ayaman ma'adudat. So, what does that mean? It's been an enumerated number of ayam, not day, not night, ayam. Yam means day plus night. So a 24 hour period. So uh, ayam and ma'adudat, enumerated number of uh, ayam. So what does that enumerated mean? Why did Allah says enumerated? So when you say enumerated, it means uh, something that has been counted. It means that this is very well-known number. Allah is giving you a hint that this is a very well-known number. So, that, so you have to be able to find this number in the Quran without any problem. This is not something that you guess. This is not something that you assume. This is something that is in the Quran. This is not something that you go outside to observe the moon or anything. That is not enumerated. This is an enumerated number of ayam. Please stay with me. This is really important. Allah says the exact same thing for zakah. Haqqun ma'alum. It means a portion that is very well known. Ma'alum is well known. So, and again, I, I have an, that's another video, but I just want you to tell, uh, want, want you to pay attention to this. And then Allah goes on to say that whoever is married and sick, or if you are traveling Allah Safarin, Fa'idatun min ayamin ukhar. So you can basically make up for it, uh, the same number of days. And then it says, Va'ala ladina yotiqunahu. It says, on those who have difficulty do performing the fast, it causes problems for them. Yatiqunahu means when you have difficulty doing something, you can't do it. It causes problem for you. You can do a ransom. Fidiatun. Fidyah means ransom. So here it has translated ransom. Ta'amu miskin, you have to feed one poor person. So basically, for each day of fasting, it's a ransom as substitute of fast feeding a poor person each day. So what does that mean? So ransom for each day of fasting, Allah is telling us that ransom. Ransom for each day of fasting is basically feeding one poor person. So this is very important. We're going to take a look at another, uh, another, uh, another verse right after this. So for each one for each one day of fasting, if you can't fast, if you have problems, if you can't do it, your job, some something that you you can't do it, then you have a reason. Then you have to feed. One poor person. So uh, now let's go to the next verse. I actually have a video about that, but I'm going to go over it again because it is very important. So next verse we're looking at is verse number four of chapter 58. And I'm not going to go over why this is, but you know, as a ransom, uh, as an atonement for something, Allah says that you can actually free a slave and then if you can't free a slave, a slave, then a fast for two months consecutively. So, fathiyamu shahrain means two months. Shahrain, two months 
متتابع عین it means two, two consecutive months so you have to fast two consecutive months if you cannot free a slave if you can't fast for two consecutive months Allah tells us فَمَنْ لَمْ يَسْتَتَ whoever cannot do that then you have فَإِطْعَامُ it means you have to feed ستين means sixty مسكينة مسكين means poor person so whoever is unable then the feeding of sixty poor persons remember in the previous verse again Allah uses used the word مسكين تَعَامُ مسكين it means feeding of a poor person so you see how this is actually tying back into the previous verse. This is really important. Allah, that's how Allah teaches us in the Quran. You have to be able to connect them together. Quran, the meaning of it is something that you connect it together. That's how Allah designed it. it the reason why he did that is to separate, to weed those who think versus those who don't think. So that is really, that's, that's a miracle of the Quran. That you have to think, you have to read it, you have to learn it, you have to understand every aspect of it. This is a, this is a miraculous book. So, it um, almost setina meskina, 60 poor people. So, what is Allah telling us here? So, two consecutive months, shahrain mutatabi'ain, two consecutive months in the book of Allah, is equal to 60 days. Allah gave us the formula in the previous verse. And in this verse, Allah gave us a practical example. Two consecutive months in the book of Allah, which is the Quran, is equivalent to how many days? 60 days. So if two consecutive months is equal to 60 days, then it should be very easy for us to figure out how many days are there, there are in the book of Allah for each month or each shahr. So one month is 60 divided by what? 60 divided by 2 equals 30. It's a very easy math that you can do. So one month, and remember Allah uses the word shahr. One month is equal to? 30 days so that alone Allah in his book in the Quran is ruling out any sort of lunar month any sort of lunar observation you ask me why I give you the answer each lunar month is equal to 29.5 days it can never be 30 days that's why you can never in any lunar calendar, semi-lunar, full lunar, all these satanic calendars that exist, all lunar calendars are satanic, are from Akbar, all of them. You cannot find in them two months together that come to be 60 days. Lunar months alternate between 29 days and 30 days. So, the most you can get is how many days? 59 days. But you can never get 60 days. You can never reconcile these two. It beats me. It surprises me that some of the Quranic brothers go and say it's a semi-lunar. Brother, read the Quran. You don't need to go that far. You don't need to pay any money. Just read the Quran. Allah is telling you how many days there are in a month in His book. Pay attention, my brother, my sister. It's there. You can never have 60 days with two consecutive lunar months. Never. The most you will have is 59 days. So Allah is telling us that each month, each shah is 30 days. And that's why Allah uses the word shahr. You don't, shahr has nothing in common with qamar. The word for moon is qamar. 
Shar has nothing, no commonality with Khamer. This is because at the time of Abraham, when the true calendar, Arabs and, and the Hebrews are the sons of Abraham. It had nothing to do with moon. The root of Shah comes from that time. It has nothing to do with that. Okay, now let's look at verse number 185 of chapter 2 together. So, the Shahru Ramadan, it means month of Ramadan. Again, it's the word Shah. I want to pay attention. Month of Ramadan. Then it says, Faman Shahida, Min Shahra Fal Yasum. Shahida min kumushahra here means whoever is present. Excuse my handwriting, it's horrible, I know. So whoever is present during the month. Which month? The month of Ramadan. So if you are present during the month of Ramadan, you have to fast it. I just told you how many days there are in a shah, in a month. How many days were there? 30 days. So if you are present in this month, regardless of where you are in this world, and it's always the seventh month, it's always the first month of fall. So who, if you are present in the first month of fall, wherever you are in this world, you have to fast it that month. If you witness that month, if you are alive in that month, you have no excuse. You have to fast it or you have to do other alternatives that Allah has placed for you in the Quran. So how many days is the days of fasting? 30 days. 30 days. A shah is equal to 30 days. But I want to show you something else in the exact same verse. Here, if you go a little bit forward, it says, again, if you are, you are sick or if you are traveling, you can actually compensate with fasting in other days, in other months. So Allah, again, then Allah says, Allah wants ease for you. He doesn't want you to be in trouble. He doesn't want difficulty for you. But the point I want to make is here. That means to complete the period. The period is wrong. Eddah means number. This translation is wrong. Like all the other translations. They have some good translations, some bad translations. All of them have mistakes. You have to learn to do it yourself. You have to learn to read this. al means the number. Which number? al means the number, the number. I want to emphasize that. It's just, it's just like Al-Salah, the Salah, Al-Zakah, the Zakah. So when Allah says the number, this number is very well known. This is not like any number. This is not like 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 25, 29 every year. You know, the worshippers of Akbar, every year they fight with each other over this number. One of them says, I saw the moon in like 28 days. The other one is 29 days. The other one is 30 days. The other one is 31. It's a joke. Allah says, the number. What does it mean? It means only one number. It's the number. It's like the Salah. There's only one Salah. There's only one way to perform it. It's like the Zakah, ad -zakah. There's only one Zakah. There's only one rate of zakah in the Quran. So it's the number. So what number? That's the number 30 that I just shared with you. But give me one second and I'll show you even a better example. That is going to clarify this for you forever. So you know 100%. I have not shared this example before. I'm going to share it with you. Okay, let's together look at verse number 142 of chapter 7. It says, It says, And we made an appointment with Moses for how many nights? Thalafina Laila. 
means 30 nights. Is it ringing any bells for you? We completed it with 10. So Allah initially told Prophet Moses, the only human being that Allah has ever talked to in the world, come on top of the mountains for 30 nights. Why does it say nights? Because if it had says if it had said days, some people would say no, it was days, they would have created confusion. Remember, in the example of Zechariah, Allah again specified for us that a yawm is day plus night. One time it says, your sign is that you're not going to talk to people for three yawms. Then the other time it says, you're not going to talk to people for three nights. So here Allah is, just to make sure that we know it was 34, it says 30 nights. It's really important. And remember, these the, the fast initially was both days and nights. And then Allah in Surah 2, I think 2, 2, 1, 8, 7, discounted the nights to believers. Before then, up until then, it was day and nights. 30 full days. 30 full days. Again, I'm saying days. I apologize. 30 full ayam or 30 full days and and nights. And that's why Allah uses the word night here. So, all together, how many? Arba'ina, again, Allah says Layla. So, 40 nights. Does this ring a bell for you? Who else do you know of who secluded themselves, who isolated themselves? And fasted for 40 days. Does that sound like Jesus Christ? Who went to the desert, took refuge from everyone, and no one knew where he was? For 40 days and 40 nights? Does that sound like the stories we have heard about Prophet Muhammad going to Hara Cave? For 40 days and 40 nights. Brothers, that's, that's, that's what it is. Brothers and sisters, that's what it is. If you, you guessed right. Guess who was on top of that mountain? It was Allah and his angels. So Prophet Moses talked to Allah over there. Received revelation from him. Talked to the angel of the Lord. The archangel of the Lord, Gabriel, Jebrail. Was there any human beings on that mountain? Of course not. So Moses left Aaron behind. Prophet Aaron, Prophet Harun behind. So even Prophet Harun was not there. So there was no human beings over there. Does that sound like the fast that Maryam did? That this day you are not, I'm fasting. Because I'm fasting, I'm not going to be talking to any human beings. Is this like the sign that Allah gave to Zechariah? Zechariah said, give me a sign. It's like your sign is that for three days you shall not talk to any human beings and glorify your Lord. Praise Him. But no talking with any human beings. It's a blessed fast. It's a sign from Allah. This fast is a sign from Allah. Unlike, unlike the Fast of not eating and drinking, which is a sign from Akbar, the bigger devil, to torture you, to make you weak, drowsy. Whereas the, whereas the fast of Allah makes you sharp. So, the point number one Shah is 
different than Qamar has nothing to do with moon. One shah is equal to 30 ayam. 30 ayam. What does 30 ayam mean? It means 30 days when it comes to fasting. There are different versions of yam for creation and things. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about fasting when it's talking about ayam as relevant to fasting. 30 days and 30 nights. 30 nahars and 30, la uh, 30 lails. Prophet Moses made an appointment with Allah. One full shah. One full shah. It was initially 30 nights. So, I'm telling you. Feel free to believe or not believe. That's fine. I'm telling you. That appointment that Allah made with Prophet Moses was during the month of Ramadan. Those 30 days was the month of Ramadan. Laylatul Qadr. That's the month of revelation. That's when, that's when the angels together with Ar-Ruh, the archangel Gabriel, they are sent down. Blessed is that day. Hatta matla il faj up until the time of Fajr. And I'm telling you, hundred percent, that this appointment, this was the month of Ramadan. So what happened? Prophet Moses secluded himself during the month of Ramadan when I went on top of Mount Sinai and fasted for 30 days and 30 nights. He was not talking to anyone except for angels. Except for Allah. But he was not talking to any human beings. That is the key. You can't talk to anyone else. And Prophet Muhammad was fasting up there. And everything was fine. Because people down there were also fasting. Prophet Harun and the Israelites were also fasting for 30 days and 30 nights. But as soon as the fast was over, people expected Moses to come back. And that's when the talking starts. Because now they can resume conversation. And that's when Satan, Akbar, the big devil, bigger devil, causes problems. Of course, Allah allowed it. It was a test. It was that talking started, that conversation, that rumor, talking, conversation, rumor, backbiting, bad words. Lying, swearing, these are all from talking. But when you fast, you are keeping yourself from, from, from any of those traps. That's why for the first 30 days, it was okay. Because everyone was fasting. Everyone was doing the fast. Everyone, nobody was talking. None of the Israelites were talking. But as soon as the 30 days was, was over, Moses stayed on top of the mountain for another 10 days. So that's the first 10 days of the next month of after Ramadan. But people started talking because 30 days month of Ramadan was over. So people started talking and that's when that's how Satan got them. That's how Iblis got them. So one full shah, it was definitely in Ramadan. It was definitely the first month of fall. So now we know when Prophet Moses went, went on top of Mount Sinai. I have never made them this media video before. It's the first time I'm telling you this. It was on the first, on, during Ramadan, it's first month of fall. 
and Moses was alone with Allah and his angels. There was no human beings there, including Prophet Harun. He was not there. The troubles started during the last 10 nights. Why? Because people started talking. So, you remember the previous verse, that you might complete the number. Al-Idda, the number. What number? Thalathina Layla. Do you see that? My brothers, my sisters, I'm not making these things up. You cannot make these things up. These are in the Quran. Quran is clear. Quran is the most clear book in the world. Everything is in it. We just don't understand it. Our brains are not clear. Our hearts are not clear. Our minds are not clear. Our eyes are not clear. We cannot see. That's why I pray to the Lord. So open up my eyes so that I can see. So that I can see the wisdom of your word. So that I can see the secret of your words. And you should do the same as well. So this is al idda the number. What is al idda I'm going to write it here for you. al idda the tukmil al idda that you must complete the number. What number? Number 30. This is not lunar. This is, has nothing to do with the moon. With the satanic calendar of moon. You have to abandon that. You can never get a 30 days. Lunar months are 29.5 days. I'm sorry, 29.5. Yeah, yeah, 29.5 days. So they can never be 30 days. That's why every lunar month that you have is either 29, which is short, half a day, or 30, which is long, half a day. It's never accurate. You can't even, you really cannot have a calendar with that thing. So somebody might come and say, hey, how do you know Prof, Pro, Prophet Moses was up there, so he was not also eating and drinking? That's a good question. That's a good question. However, I tell you, Allah never tells in the Quran, never issues a command not to eat or drink. In fact, Allah commands us in chapter 7, and I shared that verse in the previous video, that you have to eat and drink in moderation. Allah puts the eating and drinking, kolu washrabu, in the verse of fasting for us. Fal'ana ba'ashiruhunna. Because we have to eat and drink. What does Allah tell Maryam? Eat and drink. Eat and drink. And when you saw someone, tell them I'm fasting. Because I'm fasting, I will not talk to any human beings today. She's already talking to angels. It's only about human beings. So, eating and drinking is necessary for us. That's how Allah has created us. The other thing I want to share with you, when Maryam was in the prayer cham chamber, Allah was taking him food. There's a verse in the Quran. It says every time Zechariah, "Kullama dakhal alayha akhalayha dakhariya al-mihrab." Beautiful, beautiful verses. Just amazing. Every time Zechariah entered upon her in the prayer chamber. So where is Maryam? In the prayer chamber. He's praying. He's meditating. But every time Zachariah goes in there, 
He found with her provision. Rizqa. Provision. He was finding food. Why was not Maryam fasting while he, she was in prayer chamber? Why was she not eating and if, if fasting and is a good thing? If not eating and drinking, I'm by fasting, I'm like a wrong fast. I'm not talking about the actual fast. If not eating and drinking is a good thing, why don't you think? Why don't you people think? If not eating and drinking is not a, is a good thing, why was Maryam eating in prayer and drinking in prayer and chamber, prayer chamber? Why was Zachariah every time she he was entering on Maryam, he would find food and drinks over there, rizqa, provisions. Because you have to eat and drink in order to be able to meditate, in order to be able to understand, in order to be, in order to be able to learn. My brothers and sisters, if you doubt that, don't eat and go to school, go to university, go try to learn something, see how your brain works. You're not going to be able to learn anything. I have done it. I started doing the wrong fast of not eating and drinking when I was seven years old. Up until Allah taught me what a horrible thing it was. Up until Allah taught me what a satanic practice it is. So angels were taking food and drink for Maryam. Now I tell you, when Moses was on that mountain, do you think Allah was unable? And Moses was talking to angels and Allah that do you think the angels would not take Moses, Rizqa, food and drink? If they were doing it for Maryam, how much more they would do it for Moses? Okay. I hope you really enjoyed this and uh, learned from this. Quran, blessed be the name of the Lord, Allah. Blessed be his holy name. I love him. You should love him. And if you truly love him, he will open your heart so you can learn. But if you are after your own wishes and desires, Allah knows what is in your heart. Follow the Quran. The number is there. 30 days. It's not two days. It's not three days. It's not seven. None of those. 30 days. It's there. I showed you example of Moses today as well. So hopefully... I have three examples. I have I, my challenges there for, for the worshippers of Akbar, for the priests of Akbar who mislead Allah's servants. For the past 1300, they have been misleading Allah's servants. Their livelihood is to mislead Allah's servants. That's their livelihood. They make money off of misleading Allah's servants. They get the zakat money, Shia, Sunni, all of them, from Allah's servant to mislead them, to feed them lies. So my challenge is still there. Peace and blessings on all of you.